Okay, welcome to part three of LabVIEW tutorial for for loops. And we're going to open up the file that we worked on last time, making this sine wave at various sampling rates with a noise level on it. And so in this in this tutorial, I'm going to do a loop within a loop and introduce the shift register. So I'm going to maximize this and put this somewhere in the middle. Go back to, to programming, structures, for loop. And then I'm going to make a big for loop around the internal for loop. So we have now an outside loop and an inside loop. The outside loop, number of iterations as we did before. Right click, create control. And then let's just say number of outside loop iterations. And maybe I'll just set that to 1 for now. Okay, so that just means that this loop inside of here, this generate sine wave loop, is going to run as many times as we call this outside loop. And so what we're going to do is remember that each time we run this program, those random numbers are different. So what we want to do is run this loop for a specific number of times and store the data and collect that and, and take a look at the data afterwards. So we use that by using a shift register. So highlight, so we just go to the edge of the for loop and then right click and then say add shift register. And the shift register needs to be initialized, and there's a couple different ways to do it. And so I'm going to go into programming to array and get the build array function, and then expand it out so there's two elements of it. And then I'm going to wire up the first element um, to the waveform graph. So that's our, in this case, um, 50 samples. So this is a orange wire, thick orange wire with a single column of numbers, 50 numbers in this case. And then this build array is going to make a 2D array much like uh, the columns of a spreadsheet. So I'm going to wire that to initialize the, the shift register. And then we need to just add in to see how I wired this. So what this shift register does is it keeps track of data from previous loop iterations. So the data come in here, and then on the next loop iteration, they come out here. And so this line that I'm highlighting, and by the way, to highlight a line, a wire, you can press on it once, or you can click on it twice, or three times to highlight the whole thing. So this wire here is the previous data that were stored. So for good measure we're going to initialize this over here. So this is kind of the proper way to initialize a shift register. Let right click, create constant, and just leave it at that. But that's actually not necessary in this instance. Okay, so on the first loop iteration there's nothing in here because this array is blank here. So we get our 50 values and that's just one column of data. And then that one column of data, which is glued together with our, our other empty columns, comes through here to the next loop iteration, where we have that one column data and a bunch of empty columns. And then we add another column to that. So we're just adding columns of data to a spreadsheet, where this double thick orange line kind of represents our spreadsheet. And then finally, to look at all of those graphs, control E or control E for Edward to go to the other side, get another graph, and then just we're going to stack all these graphs together. Double click on that to find out where it is, and then just wire it up. And now if we have one loop iteration, then you know our current graph just shows our current loop and then this one shows us all of the loop all of the, the data from the, those loops 
And so if I run this five times, we're going to see five graphs here. Just five graphs superimposed. Ten, ten graphs superimposed, for example. And let's say we want to look at the last, the last value that was in this, this loop. So the final value would be, we just vi wired this, this graph here. In a, and instead of indexing this, we can hover over this and say, right click, disable indexing. And then let's make another graph. And we'll call this the final sine of eight. And then so just the way the loops work, it puts the final value through there if you tunnel it directly through without indexing, while well, the disable indexing. So this is our current and this is our final. And you can see this whole thing play out. LabVIEW is so, t so fast we can't see this play out in real time, but we can insert a delay in here. So go programming, timing, and then choose this wait milliseconds and we'll just wait and put this in the outside loop. If you put it in the inside loop, it'll be ridiculously slow. Let's put a constant and let's just say 100 milliseconds. So wait 100 milliseconds in between each outside loop iteration so we can see how this plays out. See that? So our current is played here and then it collects the data. Okay, so hopefully you understood how that works. Save that and then We'll go to the next part.